I was very disappointed with the Paradox Insider event, and I hope that many were along with me, so it's not just me being overly picky. The event really, to me, felt like a waste of an hour for something that could have all been explained in various development diaries as have been done in the past. Regardless, I hope that we'll be seeing Victoria 3 because the new title will be from Paradox Development and not a subsidiary, and will be announced during ParadoxCon, which will be taking place in May. Coincidentally, it ends a day before Queen Victoria's birthday. While there's still nothing certain, I can have hopes for what will be in the game and how they improve and change it, especially because of all of the teasers that I've shown in the past, in the past video. So starting off, I'm going to be going over the economy changes that I wish to see in Victoria 3. So my first issue with uh, the Victoria 2 economy is the capitalist pops. Um, I mean, as you can see here, you have two factories uh, with Georgia and Virginia. Um, one is a winery in Georgia and an explosive factories in Virginia with capitalist support. But if you go to the States, you can see in Georgia for the winery, it's all cotton. And because of this, there's no, well, except for the one coal state. But because of this, there's no production boost to the, to the winery because it's not any of the RGOs. And you see Virginia is mostly tobacco, and so there is nothing that boosts the explosive factories like if there were sulfur somewhere else. So hopefully in the next game, the capitalist pops will be more inclined to use RGOs and previously built factories to support the economy and make better investment choices so you don't have many um, demoting because of bad investments. So another hope of mine is the ability to have trade deals, uh, whether it be by diplomacy or by sphere activity. So it would work similar to the sphere mechanic where their goods come to you first before the greater market. and that would really be beneficial because it would first give a little bit more of immersion and also you'd be able to look at the top five producers and if you're not getting enough of a good then you could trade deal with them so that you can increase greater increase the value or the amount of that you're getting uh to fully fuel your economy Um, along with this and the sphere system would be a um, greater emphasis on the sphere uh, drifting and um, investment in the sphere. Right now, all it does is slow down other countries' influence gain, but if they could change it to where maybe influence could be increased based on if you have successful factories or maybe decreased if it's suffocating their economy so you can't tank a um tank a sphereling and still get the same amount of influence because if you destroy their economy they're less likely to be friendly towards you another wish of mine is for the ability to embargo and subsidize uh, the economies of countries uh, like you can in EU4. Uh, and as you can now with war subsidies, it functioned that way except just for their economy. So this button could either be replaced with subsidies total because it would also function as war subsidies, or you could create a separate button that allows it along with a button for embargoes because in a game about economy, why can't you embargo your economy? economic rivals or even people who are say funding your enemies well the economy list was pretty short uh, I do have a lot of changes that I'd like to see in other categories and I think my second largest category would that I feel needs changes in the game is warfare because it's quite simple in the game as it stands um, so the first thing I wish to see is uh, peace treaties being more streamlined um, and visualization of peace deals. I think the current system works well with adding the goals before the war and you can add them during the war rather than say Hearts of Iron 4 where it's all at the end and 
basically a country is game over and i think that's one of the best things i like about victoria 2 is the current peace deal system we can see in eu4 that we have the ability to actually see the peace deals and i think that's a really great thing about the game where you can see what you're taking or what you're giving but one thing i don't like is that in any of the games you can't do bilateral peace deals where you can take and give so you could give up say land in africa that you don't really want but you could take a land in europe that you do want all in the same peace deal which makes them more likely to accept or even say as in the case of the Mexican-American War, where the American government did pay the Mexican government in addition to taking their land. So, I think something like that could work very well. And um, that's just really great, and I hope that it can be brought into a game. And I think Victoria 2 would be probably the most, the game where it would make the most sense um, out of any of them. One thing that I think a lot of people would like to see if they keep the current army composition system is the addition of army compositions as we see in Europa Universalis 4 because of the simplicity of it and the ability to merge them all at once without the need of rally points. But I think rally points still should be in the game as I really think they're a great addition. But as we see in EU4, you can select it and you build it like one division. So I think you should be able to do the same thing in Victoria 3 if they keep the same system based on pops and individual brigades. So one really ambitious thing that I also wish to have in Victoria 3 is that warfare goes from EU4-like warfare to more hearts of iron like warfare over time because in this period of time warfare changed drastically especially after the american civil war where you could see the new warfare versus the old in the franco-prussian war and just the vast outmatching of the french against the prussians because of the new warfare type that they're using so i think that should kind of be simulated in the game by switching from european universalis warfare to more hearts of iron like warfare so you don't have the million soldier battles that you do at the end years of victoria 2 that last years and years and years and give hundreds of war score after the battle so another thing about peace treaties that i like about europa universalis 4 is the ability to take provinces and not just whole states because i think the whole state system is kind of uh it's kind of terrible honestly that's the best i can say um, and this is a problem in Hearts of Iron 4 too. You can't make your borders exactly what you want them. And you can't take individual provinces if, they're, if there's one province in a state that's valuable to you. And I think you should be able to. And I think that that's something that they need to add um, instead of the whole states. Unless maybe colonization or maybe you could do either the province or the state. So I think that should be in the game. Another thing I'd like to see is the ability to set units to replenish automatically instead of what you have in the game now where you have to manually promote soldier pops in a place where they go below um, the amount needed to reinforce. So if you want, you could go more based off a manpower system or they could switch the game to a more manpower based system overall and you still be able to promote soldier pops to increase it. Either way, I think that should be changed. Um, another thing I would like is the ability to ignore jingoism for more authoritarian ruling parties because, honestly, it doesn't make sense for a fascist government not to be able to add a war goal because their citizens don't like it. Um, I feel like it should only be enabled for democracies or countries with free press because there would the, be the ability to refute the claim or protest the war goal as unjust in the newspaper or in the election. One other thing that I think would be great to change is the ability to choose mobilization templates. Um, I've seen that it's a it's able to happen in Hearts of Iron 3 where you can choose your mobilization and then when you mobilize it 
fills up the templates and i think that really would make a lot of sense they should still cost money but they should be much cheaper because you don't fully supply them until you hit the mobilize button and i think that would save a lot of the hassle of the micromanaging when you have the mobilize uh happen and it would also stop the ability to snipe these stacks as they spawn so i think another thing in the game that kind of plagues the warfare is forts right now in victoria 2 you just spam out forts and it just makes sieging take longer but i think they should be more an investment similar to europa universalis 4 i don't like the zone of control in europa universalis 4 and i don't think it makes sense in the game um in victoria 3 or or this era but i think you should be able to reinforce a fort and become defensive even if they're sieging and you walk into them because it makes more sense to defend a fort and i don't think it should just take longer to siege and i do think they should be not able to spam all over the country the last warfare thing i would like to change or the last i can think of right now um, is the navy limit i think it should be removed completely um, as a unit limit because it just doesn't really make sense unless they add sailors to the game but i think it should become limited by money because in the game navy is very expensive especially in the later years and realistically is extremely expensive so i think that in the later years of the game it should completely be void the limit or even in the beginning of the game honestly i think it should just be gone with completely but i think it should be limited by your economy because if you wanted to really project your power you could go into some deficits to increase your navy limit even if even if you don't have it i know it's kind of similar to that now in the game where it costs extra i believe if you go over your navy limit but it also attritions your your ships which doesn't really make the navy more realistic to me um on top of that i would also like more naval ability to customize your ships probably like in hearts of iron form and the guns i feel like that'd be really fun rather than just spamming out stacks of warships another large category that i have here is um diplomacy because i think in a game where it's not focused on warfare like most of the other games i think everything else should be bolstered a lot and i think eu4 honestly has the best diplomacy out of all of these games except for maybe stellaris but um earlier on reddit i saw a post where the domestic uh policy and you had a head of state and uh, among other things and they modded it into victoria too so it really really just shows kind of what i want here so i want a dynasty system seen like an eu4 um not necessarily able to pu a nation or stuff like that just more of being able to see your leader and if you don't have an heir then you actually get instability like in eu4 things like that because these problems were still relevant uh in this era as seen in spain with the prussian prince um another thing i would like is the ability to fund rebels or assassinate leaders uh Funding rebels is a thing in E4, which I think works really well, or would work really well in Victoria 2, especially because of rebels like Patriot Rebels or Nationalist Rebels that um, are for forming a union with your culture group. So I think being able to form, uh, fund these rebels would be very good, um, especially if you're going against a country like Russia where you can fund rebels and make it a little bit easier on you. Another thing I think is vital to this era is the ability to purchase and sell land. I cannot stress this enough. In EU4, you can sell land, but I think you should be able to offer purchases as well because there are so many treaties in this time where you purchase land, and I think it would make diplomacy a lot better. You don't have to go to war for a tiny piece of land, and it would really just make the game just more in-depth. Another thing I would like to see is a more dynamic sphere drift. Um, I think I think in the game, there is sphere drifts where you gain influence slowly over time based on your proximity. 
and I think that's a really good idea, but I think it should be raised a little bit. So, for instance, it won't be as easy for America to have Denmark in their sphere of influence as the AI always does for some reason because of how far they are away and because there are nations like Germany or Prussia and um, England that are right there. So I think they should get less influence, which they do because of distance. But I think that passively, England and Prussia should get a lot more influence passively over time because of their proximity. And also power projection could be used as well for this system, or even investments could help in this system as well. Another thing I would like with diplomacy is to uh, add territorial claims that are different from cores that aren't recognized by the wider international community. We see this in EU4 with claims, but um, it's a little different because what I hope is that um, these claims will be, uh, they'll, they'll be more likely to, to spark a crisis because they're not recognized by most people. Perhaps maybe your allies could recognize them for you and maybe they could be better recognized if you have a cultural group in common. But I think it could really be interesting if you have claims that only you and your allies support, and when you take it, it has a higher chance of being a crisis. So one huge thing that I think could really work in Victoria 3 is the ability to have autonomy in your puppets. Change their ability to let them expand or make them less autonomous, practically making them a, say, federal state, because... I feel like you could have different governments to see which works best or maybe even you don't want to deal with a colonial government in Africa so you give them the ability to expand so colonization in Africa is not doesn't have to be so micromanaged how it is now. I think this could be really great um, sort of like Together for Victory in Hearts of Iron 4 but a little bit more in depth where you get to really choose more on what it is. Um, and maybe select individual policies for them, sort of like, I think, in the new EU4 DLC with the colonization. So one really annoying thing in this game is the inability to declare war on a puppet nation. If you have cores on somebody's puppet, you cannot declare war on them. And I don't know why that's a thing, but it's very obnoxious, and I think it just should be removed. Another thing is, I think the infamy system should be dynamic based on province or state value akin to EU4. In EU4, different provinces have different aggressive expansion impact based on their value, and I think that's a very good system that should be given to Victoria 2. And even then, I also think that it shouldn't be the same for every country on Earth. I think... Um, um, I think... Ottoman expansion shouldn't be very much cared about by America because it just isn't of interest to them. I think the ability to use gunboat diplomacy against uncivs or weak countries could also be really good. Maybe uh, extort them for money or resource access, um, such as Commodore Perry. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense in this time, especially with all the uncivilized countries around the globe that are easy to push around. Another thing that I think should be in the game is the ability to send mercenaries or volunteers to a country as you can as you can do in EU4 or Hearts of Iron uh, because I would like to be able to send maybe a token small force to attach to a greater army in a country to support them against maybe a, con a common enemy that I don't want to fight head on. Another ability from E4 that I think should be in the game is the ability to trade technology. In E4 it's a little bit different because it's institutions, not technology, but I think being able to trade technology also like in Stellaris with your allies and maybe doing technology trade agreements that give you either the technology outright, which I think might be a little bit broken, so maybe just like a research boost to the technology if your trade ally has it. Another thing that I think should really be in the game that isn't is the ability to guarantee, give warnings, threaten war, as we see in EU4. So you can guarantee countries now, but they have to be in your sphere of influence. So only one country can guarantee, uh, which I don't think makes a lot of sense because 
but we saw, I mean, this is a little bit out of the scope, but in World War II, multiple countries were guaranteeing the independence of Poland against Germany. Maybe even guarantee the independence for specific countries. So say you form a defensive alliance with Belgium, but only if the Netherlands attacks them or only if Prussia attacks them. So I think that could be a really good system. So I think another thing you should be able to do, like in EU4, um, is loan money and pay off someone's debt. So loaning money at a specific interest rate would should be available. So maybe if you want to help an ally during a war, you could give them a large loan at a very low interest rate. Or maybe if you want to do some debt trapping, um, then you could give a loan at a very high interest rate that you know they will not be able to pay. So you could dispatch a punitive expedition on uncivs, things like that. Um, also, paying off someone's debt, I don't know why you can't do that, especially if they're in your sphere of influence, you should be able to pay off their debt um, to gain more influence. And the biggest thing I don't like about diplomacy is the diplomatic points. People always just improve relations, improve relations over and over until they run out of diplomatic points and they forget for a few years. And I don't think that's a very good system. I think it should be similar to E4 with their diplomats, um, same with Stellaris and their diplomats. So, and I think you should gain more with more admin spending or maybe a new um, foreign policy spending for maybe government aid to other countries and things like that. So you should be able to gain diplomats so you can passively improve relations. Um, I mean, even in Hearts of Iron, that's similar, but you don't have a diplomat limit, but I think it should be a thing. Um, anyway, that wraps it up for diplomacy. And now we're on to domestic issues. Okay, here we are heading into the last into the last three sections that I have. Um, the last two are pretty small, so I'm just gonna lump them in with the domestic issues. So I think research should be more akin to Hearts of Iron um, with the branching abilities and maybe having to choose between two certain things. Um, and I think events should, should be able to focus, be focused on in like decisions where you can promote like specific things, specific sectors of the research and for inventions, uh, like in Hearts of Iron 1, I think, you can pay companies to focus on specific things and they have better skills in certain areas. So I think inventions should be less up to RNG because, especially in the late game, it can kill your country if you don't get gas defense or gas attack. The game, and I really like about CK3, is the ability to play cities. So I think you should be able to do this because even in past, before this time period, there have been planned cities um, like Petrograd that I think really could be really nice um, and maybe promote migration even in like uh, nations that don't necessarily have high migration, like maybe small European states that have a high living standard. So the life rating system or whatever they decide to put in its place could be increased based on how much funding you give the city or how much you invest into it or maybe you could even change your capital to these planned cities um, so another thing i think you should be able to do domestically is select different policies for dis different uh, federal states for countries like america um, you could see maybe which policies would work best or maybe different policies give different ideologies less militancy or consciousness or attract more immigrants. So say in Texas, you could do very laissez-faire type policies or in where in New York, where you're getting a lot of immigrants, you could do more centralized. So the cities are higher life rating and you can be more hands-on. I think um, ideologically or nationally opposed rebels should fight each other um, where guerrillas and organized rebellions can have an actual nation that can rise up and take your territory such as um, how it happens in any Hoi Four mod where there's rebels um, so organized rebels can actually have a nation if they get enough of a foothold in your country I also think aligned rebels should be friendly to you such as patriots of your group so when you're invading a country um, you don't get attacked uh, rather, you get assisted by patriots of your group, um, like if you're taking Alsace-Lorraine as France, if you're taking it back and there's French rebels, then they should help you siege. 
I think neutral rebel should also be a thing. So if there is, say, anarcho-liberals in a country and you're sieging it down, they should be neutral to you and not attack you because you don't have uh, much to go against. Unless you're an opposing ideology, whereas I think they should be willing to fight you. I think another thing that could really work in this game, um, in Victoria 3, would be to add diseases similar to that in CK2, where there's spread over time, and you can choose to give hospitals, healthcare, maybe subsidized vaccines, etc. So you can handle the more realistic parts, and if you don't handle it, it could be disastrous for your population. I think in the game there should also be more cultural control through edu education and other policies you can choose. So you should be able to choose assimilation or possibly forced migration or extermination policies um, to change your assimilation. I think it should also be uh, assimilation should change to where cultures are able to assimilate if they have high life rating and um, high need met if their needs are met because that just makes sense. Uh, if they're happier, they're more likely to assimilate. So I think westernization also should be more of a gameplay mechanic rather than just waiting for research points to go up for forever. So I think you should be able to enact decisions and policies to either make it quicker or um, maybe have more people support it so you won't have um, rebels rising up to reduce your westernization status. So here's the next um, pol uh, group that I have were politics. So I think you should be able to form political parties um, or ban specific political parties. Um, so you'd be able to maybe root out sympathetic groups or ban parties or undermine parties to lower their support over time. So, and I also think that authoritarian parties should be able to pass reforms without support or votes from the upper house. So similar to how fascism is in the game now, or at least in HPM, where you can reform forward or backwards, but I think you should be able to reform without the votes because if it's one pinnacle of power and you're there, then you should be able to do whatever you want with your government. So here's the next category with general options. I think there should be another start date, date added um, for 1815 at the fall of Napoleon where um, the concert of Europe is made and balance of power is established. Uh, 1836, because Victoria II, and 1861, because of the Civil War. So one of those is the same. And then in general, I would also like to see more or smaller regions and provinces in the game for the ability to form uh, better borders and other similar things. Anyway, that's it for my hopes for Victoria 3. If you have any other suggestions that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. If you want to see Crusader Kings 3, leave a like. I might do that with my friends sometime and upload it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Join the Discord. It's in the description. It only takes a second. And have a great morning, afternoon, or night.